And our message this morning comes out of the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13. Have you ever heard a preacher say, you need to get a copy of this message? It is the greatest single message you will ever hear. This is one message you cannot afford to miss. You ever heard people say that? Well, you know, they are probably right. We will never know. But I believe that the message I'm about to share with you this morning is one we cannot afford to ignore. One we cannot afford to ignore. In fact, I have so titled the message, One Message We Cannot Ignore. Why? Because the truths revealed by Jesus in this text is life-altering and powerful, and they just cannot be ignored. Now, what? Our text is a popular and a well-known one, one that most professing believers are aware of. So you're probably asking why. Why, why. why is this so important? It is because of what Jesus says at the end. He says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You see, when Jesus says that, it's important. You better listen. You better perk up your ears. You better take notice. And more importantly, if you will look through the Gospels, all four Gospels, we see that Jesus uses this phrase only twice. Here in this text, and again in the parable of the wheat and the tears. And when you understand the context and the message of these parables, you will see why this is one message you cannot afford to ignore. Our text is referred to as the parable of the sower and the seed. In reality... It is a parable about the soils, because the soil is the key variable in the story. And we do not have to wonder about this. Jesus explains this in, the, in his explanation of the parable. You see, the sower does not change, and the seed does not change. It is the soils that change. And it is the soils that is the focus of the parable. It is also the focus of our message this morning. Because here in the words of Jesus, in his description of the soils, we will see most believers, ourselves included. And in this chapter of Matthew's gospel, there are at least eight parables in which Jesus pictures modern day Christianity. And in these parables, he speaks of the kingdom of heaven as being a mixture of good and bad. He includes professing believers as well as genuine believers, false doctrine as well as true doctrine, false ritual as well as true ritual, hypocritical worship as well as genuine worship, and professing belief, belief as well as real belief. That is why the truths as revealed in this parable make for one message we cannot ignore. Read with me. Chapter 13 of Matthew's Gospel. Beginning at verse 1. And the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitudes stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold. When Jesus says, Behold, you better behold. Get ready for what he is about to say. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell on by the wayside, and the fowls came and developed, devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell on good soil, good ground, and brought forth fruit. Some one hundred fold, some sixty fold, and some thirty fold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, before we get to the parable, the, the, the soil and the, and the heart of the message, I want to give a, an encouragement to our preachers. I want you first here, preachers, to notice the task of the sower. Notice first the sower's identity. In the parable, the sower is a farmer who is broadcasting seed into his fields. Now, this parable is also recorded in Luke's gospel as well as Mark's gospel. And in, in Jesus' interpret, interpretation in Mark, he says, the sower sows the word, the word of God. 
The sower is pictured here as a reference to Jesus and by extension to all who preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time we preach, we are sowing the word of God. At this very moment, I am sowing the word of God. Hallelujah. Notice also the sower's intentions. As the farmer casts his seeds into the field, he does so with the hope that some will fall on good soil. That is my hope this morning, that God's word is going to fall on good soil. Hallelujah. He sows because ultimately he is desiring to reap a harvest. He sows his seed with the expectation that there will be much more to come back to him in return. He sows with one goal, to, to get his seed into the ground so the harvest can come. And the same is true with the seed of the gospel message. It is sown into the field of the world with the prayer and the hope that it will fall on good hearts. And that it will take root and it will grow up. And that it will produce much more fruit for the glory of God. And there are hearts in this house who at one time you have received the good seed of the gospel. And that seed has germinated in your heart and reproduced within your soul. And now your life is a bountiful, faithful testimony, testimony of the power of God's word to change you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the heavenly intention of the sower. And this is also my intention this morning. Notice also, the sower is investment. The farmer must give something away before he can expect to receive anything in return. He takes the precious seed from the last harvest and he scatters it around in his field, hoping that he will get a harvest in return. And the seed is all that the farmer has. Preachers, a word of God is all that we have Amen. to give to the people. Amen. Hallelujah. That is what we have and that is what we give. The seed is all that the farmer has and he is giving it away in the hope that he will receive more in return. This is the, 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 what the heavenly sower did. When Jesus came, he gave his all that the gospel seed might be sown in hearts. In human hearts. He died on a cross and rose again. He literally gave his all. Knowing that someday the gospel message will reach some people. And good soil and fruit will come. And he will get a harvest in return. He gave his all for you and I. That we might have a gospel to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah says that surely... Surely, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. And in the end he says, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of all. Jesus came to take that and take the, dead, the, 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 the sin of the world upon himself, going to a cross and dying and raising again so you and I could have the gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah. He gave his all so that we might be able to produce fruit for the glory of God. In, in Romans 7, Paul, tell, Paul tells us that we should bring forth much fruit unto God. So the message we preach is a message concerning free gift of salvation. But I want to tell you that salvation maybe was free, but it was not cheap. Amen. Hallelujah. Salvation came to us freely, but it certainly was not cheap. It cost the glory of heaven, his life on a cross. And God gave all that he had so we could have a soul saving, life changing, gospel message to preach and believe. Hallelujah. So let us give God praise for his glorious message this morning. Hallelujah. Now I want you also to see the treasure of the word of God. The treasure of the seed. In Luke chapter 8. Jesus identifies the seed as the word of God. When the farmer walked into his field with his seed bag. He had in his hand a genuine treasure. Hallelujah. He cast the treasure into the wind. Hoping that it will accomplish his desires. And 2,000 years ago. When Jesus walked into the scene of this world. He came bringing the seed of grace. 
the seed of the gospel message. Hallelujah. And he has promised us, us preachers, that when we preach, his word shall go forth and it shall accomplish its purpose. It shall not return unto him void. Take heart, preachers. When you preach and you share God's word, God honors it by returning and fulfilling what the desires of his heart. Amen. He will fulfill his word. Praise the Lord. Notice the treasure of the seed. It holds great power. The power of life. Hallelujah. Jesus says, my word is life. And before the seed falls on the soil, the soil is devoid of life. It is barren and empty. But when the seed falls onto the ground, the good ground and it germinates, it brings forth life to something that was dead. Hallelujah. And so it is with the gospel of grace. It brings life to the dead hearts, to those who are lost in their sins. And when the seed germinates, it always transforms the soil in which it was sown. Hallelujah. It brings life and eventually fruit in a place where before there was only deadness and barrenness. And this is what makes the gospel such a great treasure because it produces life where there was formerly no life. Hallelujah. And in the addition to holding great power, it holds great promise. The promise of more. Hallelujah. Every seed that is sown has the potential to bring much more seed. Hallelujah. Verse 8 bears that out. It talks about 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. One little seed has the, pro the, 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 the potential to provide more. If you have ever planted anything, you know this. Hallelujah. You plant one bean seed and from that seed you are going to reap beans. Each pot filled with multiple seeds. Praise God. Sow one squash seed and it will produce a plant that yields several fully grown squashes. Each containing dozens if not hundreds of seeds. Plant one corn, one, one corn seed, and you would see it grows up into a plant with many ears of corn, each holding rows and rows of seed. The power of the gospel to produce more, because seed always holds the promise of more. And such is the promise of the seed of the gospel of grace. When it is sown in a ready heart, it will germinate and reproduce itself over and over again. Praise the Lord. So take heart, you preachers and you ministers of the gospel, that when you stand to preach and share God's word, he is going to honor you, honor his word. God honors his word that it shall not come back to him void. It shall accomplish the purpose from which it is said. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let us come to the heart of the message. And let us examine the seed. The, the, the soils. Verse 4. And when he sowed. Some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell by the wayside. You see in Jesus' day. There were no fences that separated the properties. Huh? Instead, a long, narrow footpaths were used by the traveling public. And those paths were trodden down as hard as pavement by the constant use of people passing up and down, walking on them. And this is the hard wayside ground that Christ is referring to. And in verse 19, Jesus says, this speaks of the person who hears the gospel, but who doesn't understand it. Hallelujah. Jesus Speaks the God, the, the parable in the verses above. But let's, let's go to the interpretation because I don't want you to miss this. Skip down to verse 18 of that same chapter. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of God and understanding it not. Then cometh the wicked one and catch it away that which is sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the side into... Oh, so let me stop there and go and, and explain this to you. When one heareth the word of the kingdom and understanding it not. Notice now, these people, they are exposed to the word of God somewhere on a regular basis. It's not that they never hear the word. 
they hear the word. Amen. The word definitely falls upon them. Some have made public decisions and some have not. But no matter, they are still on the way off on the side somewhere, paying little attention to what is going on. This is what Jesus is saying. He says they are on the wayside. This speaks of him who receives the word on the wayside. And even those who have made decisions, their decisions are not genuine. They are hard. They have become hard and hard-hearted with closed minds, concrete hearts. So they pay little or no attention. They pay little attention, give little heed to the word that is given. Their minds are always elsewhere. They have no interest and are indifferent, failing to realize how important the word of God is to their hearts. Hallelujah. Jesus says they are on the wayside. They feel that they can get along without the word of God. You see, Jesus said, the wicked one comes and he snatches away whatever is sown. You see, people whose hearts are not open and soft, they are easy prey for the devil. You know why? Because when they hear the word, Jesus says the word is just sitting there. It is exposed to the devil. They do not ingest the word. They do not let the word come into their hearts. And so the devil comes and he steals it away. Easy. It remains right there on the surface. And Jesus describes these people in this parable. He says, for the heart of this people is wax gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes have their closed. The less they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. And understand with their heart and shall be converted. And I shall heal them. No doubt, he says, he who has ears, let him hear. Amen. Hallelujah. And scripture gives us clear warning. We ought to give heed on the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest the time comes when we forget what we hear. Hallelujah. You see, these are the people who cannot make a connection between the claims of the gospel and their life. Maybe it is because they have been so become so steep in their sin that they just refuse to believe. There are people like that. They just refuse to believe. Not that they have never heard the gospel. They hear it time and time again. But they just refuse to believe. Maybe it is because they are so callous and cold toward things of God that they just refuse to hear. Maybe it is because they have hardened their hearts for years against the call of the gospel. And like that part, that trampled part, they have become hard and concrete. And they just refuse to hear. The seed of the gospel cannot penetrate the soil of their hearts. They hear the gospel and they dismiss it as foolishness. And when this happens, the devil and his minions will just snatch away the gospel seed and it will de divert their mind to something else, some person, some other thing. And this is the person that Jesus says, who heart, whose heart is not prepared for a work of grace and will not lead to salvation. Praise God. In verse 5, And some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. You see, in, in, in Palestine, this is the, 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 the environment is such that there, 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 there is often stony places and often there will be an outcropping of limestone rock covered by a thin layer of topsoil. And this soil looks good. It looks like it's ready to be sown. And the ground looks good and productive and seed cast there will quickly spring up into a promising plant. But because there is no depth of soil, the soon the sun comes up and beats on that tender plant and it withers and dies and produces no fruit. And this kind of soil speaks to the, of the heart that makes an emotional response to the presentation of the gospel. Perhaps this person heard, heard the gospel and decided, well, I have tried everything else. I might as well try Jesus. Hmm? I might as well try Jesus. And they come to the altar because they, some friend nudges them or pushes them up or drags them up here and they make a prayer. Oh, Oh. 
Maybe it's that they heard some shallow presentation of the gospel that prevents the benefit of salvation but doesn't tell them about the cost. You see, there are costs to being a Christian. And this is the person who knows nothing about repentance, who knows nothing about dying to self, who knows nothing about turning away from their old life. And there are millions like this who have been inoculated, for a better word, against the gospel by some flimsy presentation and by some false profession of faith. Whatever has happened, they made a profession, they were excited, they were active, and we accepted them as the real deal but because there is no depth to their profession they fall away when the persecutions come and when the tribulations come that are associated with knowing Jesus they have problems they have problems simple problems like coming to church like praying like reading their Bibles they have difficult times in making a genuine and lasting break with their whole life. They shrink away from the radical claims of Christ and his cross when Jesus says, if you will follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. They have problems when Jesus says, unless you are prepared to forsake mother and father. They have problems when Jesus says, he who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is not fit to be my disciple. They have problems with that because they are not ready for that. Hallelujah. They are not ready for that. And in the end, they are further away from God than before they made their profession. Were they really saved? More than likely not. And how can we say that? Because there is no fruit of salvation. There is no fruit of salvation in their life. Because when a profession of salvation is made in your church, it will last. And we look at these people and we say maybe they are backsliders or carnal Christians. In my humble opinion, they were never saved. You see... When the Lord saves your soul, it will last. Amen. When the Lord saves you, he will change you. And when God changes your life, he does it forever. Amen. Hallelujah. What he does in you will last. Amen. Yeah, there are times when you will fall, but you will not stay away from his house. Amen. Hallelujah. You will not stay away from his presence. You will not stay away from his throne. You will not stay away from his word. You will not stay away from his people. And you certainly will not be stay away from his will. Because when God makes a change in you, it will last. Hallelujah. Because the scripture tells us, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Hallelujah. We cannot stay where we are because, we, because Christ has made a change in us. There is going to be change. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. You see the thorny soil is deceptive soil. It looks like it is ready to be sown. But underneath the surface are the living roots and the seeds of the thorns and the weeds. And the fact that the roots of the thorns and the weeds are already there means that it is going to grow faster than the seed. Because the roots are already there. And it's going to grow faster than the seed. And it's going to crowd out the seed, the crowd out the plant. You see, because the same ground begins to produce the thorns and the weeds that are already there. And before long, they choke out the seed and they choke out the word. And the plant withers and dies without producing any fruit at all. And Jesus said, this is the picture of the person who tries to have the benefit of the gospel while still clinging to their old lifestyle. They receive the word as just an addition to their life. The word is merely added on. It is not allowed to replace or to take away or to get rid of the things of the world. 
they do not truly repent. They simply try to take God and add him as another compartment in their lives. And as a result, the word is always choked out. You see, the seed of the gospel cannot survive and produce fruit in a heart that is filled with other things. Huh? It is either the seed will have the ground or sin will have the ground. They cannot be shared. We have to let the seed of the word of God take root in our hearts. And not only take root, but grow up and overshadow everything else and push it out. Praise the Lord. Jesus said it was the core, the cares of the world and the quest for earthly riches that spell disaster for the soil. This kind of person begins well. But they soon fade away, having their profession choked out by sin and the world. And again we ask, were they really saved? And again we will answer, more than likely not. Because there is no fruit. There is no fruit of salvation. Because when Jesus comes into your life, he makes a difference in that life. Amen? Amen. The scripture tells us, therefore, anyone in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Everything has become new. And again, we look at them and we say, maybe they are backslidden. And I have said it once and I'm going to say it again. Too many preachers have fed our generation a lie. We have told them. We have told them it is easy to believe. Hallelujah. We have failed to tell them that along with faith, God demands repentance. Hallelujah. We have failed to tell them that there is a cost to follow in Christ. Huh? And maybe you are hearing me today and you have made a profession, but there has been no change in your life. Then I need to tell you that you need to repent and call on Christ for salvation. Because when Jesus comes, he is going to make a change. He is going to change you. Oh, praise God. Oh, but thank God there was a good ending to the story. Verse 8. But other fell on good ground and bought fraught fruit. Some a hundred, some sixty fold, some thirty fold. Finally, some seed fell on good ground. And the, that ground, this is ground that has been worked and prepared. That's why we try to give you God's word. Hallelujah. That's why we are not holding back. We're giving you the word of God as it comes. This is the word of Christ himself. Finally, some ground is good ground. That ground has been plowed and tilled and it is ready to receive the seed when it comes. And that seed germinated within the heart of the soil. And the plant began to grow. And when that plant reached maturity, it began to produce fruit that brought honor to the farmer. Gain to the farmer. A harvest to the farmer. That's what God is looking for from us. Hallelujah. This is the picture of the heart that has been plowed deeply by the word of God. It is the picture of that heart that has been tilled and prepared and ready for the word. Amen. And when the seed of the gospel hits this kind of heart, it germinates, it grows, and it bears up fruit for the glory of God. This is the only kind of heart that can truly be said to be saved. The heart that receives the seed of the word of God and matures and grows into a productive plant that brings forth fruit. Why do I say that? Because this is the only soil that produced fruit. Amen. Jesus is making a distinction here. This is the only soil out of the four that produced fruit. You see, the only difference between the type of the soils was the fruit that it bore. You see, when Jesus enters a life through the gospel message, he will make his presence known beyond all doubt. He will cause that new believer to begin to bear fruit for the glory of God. In fact, he will leave that believer into a progression of fruit bearing. As the days go by, there will be more and more fruit for the glory of the heavenly sower. You say, what kind of fruit does it prepare, brother? Oh, well, let me tell you, it's going to produce some sanctification. 
that person is going to become more like Jesus. It's going to become more in like Jesus in holiness. Because the word of God says you have your fruit unto holiness. You're going to become more like him in righteousness. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. We'll become more like him in good works. We are saved unto good works. We are to be fruitful unto every good work. It's going to produce spirituality. We are going to start behaving more like Jesus. Not only are we to believe the word, we are to start behaving the word. Hallelujah. We are going to become spiritual. We are going to display the fruit of the spirit. Love and joy and peace and meekness and goodness and suffering and temperance. We are going to display the fruit of the spirit in our lives. We are going to develop a hunger for souls like Jesus did. Like Paul says, I am longing to come to you so that I may have some fruit amidst you also. These are some of the fruit that the truly saved life is going to bear. Hallelujah. So let me come bring this to a close now. We have moved through this passage and we have seen one sower sowing one variety of seed into four different types of soil. And we see that only one type of soil brought fruit. The other soils were unfruitful. Nothing of value came from their seed being planted in them. And according to Jesus, the seed is the gospel and the soil is our hearts. If you are honest today, which of these four soils would you say your heart is? Is your heart hard and closed off to God? If it is, then this message has meant little to you, if anything. See, the enemy has already stolen what was placed there. If you are the hard soil today, then my prayer is that God is going to dig into your heart. He's going to plow it and till it and he's going to make it ready for when God's word comes to you. And he will bring you under conviction. And prepare you to hear his word and be saved. Is your heart stony and tony? Maybe your, commit, your commitment to your profession is shallow. Do you have problems serving the Lord faithfully and staying away from sin and your old life? Do you place your hope of heaven in some prayer you prayed or some religious activity? Are you depending on church membership and baptism to take you to heaven? <laughs> Hallelujah. If so, then I challenge you to examine your heart today and be sure that you're genuinely saved. I'm not trying to make you doubt your salvation, but I'm trying to tell you that if you are saved, genuinely saved, there is going to be a difference in you. Your life is going to be different. Your outlook is going to be different. Your approach to God's word is going to be different. Your ministry around God's people is going to be different. You are going to be different. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And it's not going to be just a temporary change. It is going to be there for the rest of your lives. And if there is no change and if you are no different, then you need a checkup. Maybe you have heard this message and your heart has been stirred. You know that you need to come to Jesus. You need to repent of your sins and you need to be saved. If then you sound like good soil heart to me. That is good soil. And if the gospel seed has fallen there today and Jesus is calling you, don't delay. Come to him. Maybe you have heard this message and you do not understand it and you do, you do not accept it. Whatever your reaction, this is a word that you cannot afford to ignore. Amen. This is one message you cannot afford to ignore. Because the Lord has said, let him who heart heirs, he let him hear. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a warning in, this word, in those words. But there is also hope there. There is invitation to come and be saved. See, the gospel of Christ is the most powerful message ever given to mankind. And when we receive the gospel and we allow it to take permanent root, we will be graciously saved by the power of God. But on the other hand, that same gospel, if it falls on a heart that does not receive it, 
That same gospel has the power to banish the person from God's presence forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the message that has been so clearly pointed out in this scripture. And may we hear it. And may we heed it. And may we honor it today. Let us not leave this house the same way we came in. Without applying God's word as we have heard it. Maybe we all need to commit or recommit our lives to Jesus Christ. There is never a time when we cannot recommit ourselves to Jesus. So if you have heard the word and the word has fallen in your hearts, wherever it is, you want to come and recommit your hearts to the Lord. Come. Do not let your neighbor hold you back. You come. And Pastor Jerry is coming and he's going to make an altar call. I know that. I want you to come. Let us all recommit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. received the word of God in your heart maybe you are not saved and you have come in here today and you're hearing this message there's a reason why there's a reason why it's going forth that God could produce from you some fruit if you would allow him to so first of all I want to give opportunity to anyone who is not saved today, who have not received Jesus Christ as Savior, that you would consider salvation, repentance, deliverance. We can be born again, set free. If you are not saved today and you want to be saved, we would like to see you by the lifting of your hand. That we will pray for you and pray with you. If you are not saved and you want to be saved, if you are not saved and you want to be saved, you want to be born again. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad because everyone is saved. Who, 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 everyone that's in our presence today. But there is such a thing as bearing fruit. Maybe we had fallen asleep for a while. And this word is waking us up, shaking us up, causing us to wonder. Have I been bearing fruit? The word has touched you. 
have I been bearing fruit? The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and gentleness and forgiveness and all the wonderful things that God speaks about. Have you, have I been bearing fruit? We need to pay attention. We need to think and wonder. Has the word of God really gone into our hearts? Or is it somewhere on the side? Are we mixing it with something else? That's why it's not bearing fruit. The word of God is pure. The word of God is pure. And it will bear fruit. My heart's desire for all of us today is that we examine ourselves. And if there is some flaw in our lives, if there is something that's preventing the fruit from being seen, from being shown. Now let me tell you this. There are areas in our lives, there are weaknesses in all of our lives. The Bible says that if we say that we have no sin, we are telling a lie. Even as Christians, even as saints, I am not one to condemn the children of God. I can tell you this. Never would I condemn a child of God. I don't want nobody condemning my sons. They are my children. And I'm going to deal with them when I have to. I'll chase on them if I have to. But they are my sons. And so I don't want to condemn the children of God. But sometimes the Lord will chase us. Sometimes we need to rise up a bit. To step up a bit. To make some changes. Consider our ways. Consider our ways. And see if the word of God in truth has entered our hearts. And if it is bearing fruit. Husbands and wives. How about your relationships? You wives, are you sharp on your husband? Are you quick to fight? Are you quick to lash? Are you quick to lash back? You husbands, are you loving? Are you bearing the fruit of love? You children, you young people, are you honoring your parents? All of that is bearing the fruit of salvation. And if we are not there today, this word is for us to pay attention. So as the praise team continue to sing, I want you to Meditate on the word and ask the Lord if there's something that you need to give up to make a change, to grow deeper. Let the word really sanctify you. Let the word change you. Go ahead as they sing. Search your hearts. Praise the Lord. If there's any, anyone else who, 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 who would like to come, as you search your hearts. I've heard, I've heard this story. Where this man couldn't have a child. Couldn't have a child and he wanted a baby so bad. And the Lord spoke to him. The Bible says if you treat your wife wrong. If you don't treat your wife right. Your prayers would not be answered. And he made a whole turn. He made a whole. He was a Christian. He was a preacher. A traveling preacher. And when he changed. She got pregnant the same year. And for us. And for you as wives. The Bible speaks about respecting your husbands. It speaks about that. I, I, I am involved. I'm not better than you. I'm not different. I got to be careful. Sometimes my wife misunderstands me. But God knows when I'm innocent. And he knows when I'm willful. He knows when you're innocent. He knows when you're willful. He knows when you're not trying hard enough to bear the fruit. And he wants you to make that change. Is there anyone else that will come to the altar just to pray, just to ask the Lord to forgive and to repent and to change and to really be in a position of bearing fruit? Is there anyone else? We want Pastor Mickey and Pastor Kimber and, uh, and Pastor Barbara to come, come, come and, and, and pray with these. Sister Jean, you want to come and pray with these? Pray with them and help them and encourage them as you sing and let us encourage ourselves when we seek him in Jesus name there'll be a transformation come sister Genevieve come where we worship and all you sisters all you sisters all you ladies who feel the heart who want to serve God and you want to come and pray with them come sister Brown come come sister Brown come and pray with them come sister Beryl come you 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 prayer warriors come and pray with them so Gideon, good to see you. All of you who feel like prayer warriors, come and pray with them. Gather around them and, and, and 
and encourage them. each other. Don't stay for yourself. I was just looking at the news recently. We have 46 year old man. Rich guy. Very rich guy. Jump off a roof and kill himself. And I said, my God, could he have spoken to somebody? You have a problem today. You have a need. You have a weakness. Talk to somebody. And bear fruit. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Let me go back to your seat. Come to Sagillian. 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 Come to Sagillian. Come, come. You go back to your seat. Praise the Lord. Come to Sagillian. Hallelujah. It's okay. You come in. Stand up right there. Come, come, my dear. Come. Sister Gillian, they sent her home on, on hospice how many months ago? They sent her home hmm. hospice. God. And this is a woman of faith holding on to God for a restoration of her heart, 
and a renewing of our kidneys. And I want us to believe with her today. Come, ladies. Come, come, come. Believe with her that God will give us strength. All of you praying, ladies, come. Come, come, come. That God will give us strength. The heart will be restored. The kidneys will be restored. Look at her today. They set her home to die. She's here today. Encourage her. Encourage her. She shall live and not die. And she shall grow. Son of God, be restored. Oh, kidneys, oh, heart. Oh, kidneys, oh, heart. In the name of the Son of God, be restored. Be restored. Be restored. In Jesus' name. You will yourself when we call you. You will manifest yourself when we seek you. You will manifest yourself. We agree with you. We agree with you. You will manifest yourself. We agree with you. Agree that she is delivered by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Agree in the name of the Son of God. The Lord has healed our life. Oh, manifest yourself, Oh, manifest yourself. Glory be to God. Yes, be restored. Kidneys and heart. Be restored. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There is one more. Brother Terry. There is one more. Brother Terry. You ladies, you can go back. Kidneys, kidneys, kidneys. Dialysis. He needs, he needs a restoration of kidneys. God can do it. The same God who took the dust from the ground and made a man can restore your kidneys, Brother Terry. We want you to believe. Come and pray, saints. Those who can pray in the name of Jesus. Kidneys, if you hear me, be restored. Be restored. Be restored. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh, kidneys, we the church say to you, be restored. Brother Terry, be healed. Brother Terry, be healed. Brother Terry, be healed in the name of Jesus. We've got a lot more life to live. sends his word and heal them there is fruit and there is healing we don't want to go and leave anybody out is there anyone else who want to come for prayer for healing for deliverance you have a problem you have a situation and you want to come you want to come if anybody else somebody bring up brother Forbes wheel him up here in the name of Jesus brother Forbes we're gonna pray for you this is the house of God it was prophesied that this is the house of God where healing is. The word of God is to save, to deliver, to bear fruit, to heal in Jesus' name. Praise God. We believe in God. Praise God. Glory be to God. This is the house of God. Father, 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 let your Holy Spirit move. Anyone who needs you have faith. Come on, we can rise to high. 
Jesus' name. Shut for a man. Shut up a man. You told your husband that I have lost Testimony, saints. Amen. She's bearing fruit. She has a testimony. <laughs> but the poems you can rest. Praise you will get the up name again. of Jesus. You will walk. You will dance. Hallelujah. Will. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in the power of prayer. Saints, when you pray, believe. Faith, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And when I'm talking about mountains, I'm not talking about big pile of dirt. I'm talking about sickness. I'm talking about finance. And everything that come with it. In November, my mother took my mother to the hospital. My mother is 80, was 85 then. And her both lungs was badly infected. And she had pneumonia. So you know a person of that age, you don't expect them to go back home when they take you to the hospital. When they called me and they told me about it. And they called the family, the doctor called the family to pray. Um, to talk with them and tell them to prepare because she's not going to make it. When I get the news, I say the devil is a liar. Amen. He is a liar. Amen. I went down on my knees and I know how to pray. Praise I God. call on my father up here and I say, Father, I want to see my mother. I don't want to go down and, and bury her, a dead body. I want to see her alive. And I would love for her to live, to, see, to enjoy her children, her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. I went down the following week and I went and see her. She was in the hospital. I doesn't lie. When I saw the condition, I said my mother would go. But I said, that God up there, he never failed me. And he will never fail me. And you know what? When she hear my voice, 
She says, sis, you there? Oh, child of God, pray for me. And I prayed for her in the hospital. The nurses was attending to her and the doctors. They had to step aside, step aside. and give me room step to pray for my mother. Yeah. And I prayed and I prayed. And my mother to celebrate her birthday, January 24th. Amen. And she's doing excellent. She went to the doctor. No lungs infection. Everything give is God all right. Him. So give yeah. God praise. Give God praise. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. I praise him. She's 86. Yes, Pastor Mickey, your mother is 96. Saints, listen to me. I am one person. You hear me say that so many times. I don't believe in three score and ten. That's not God's. That's not that's not what God said. That's what the psalmist. When Israel was in trouble, they were sinners. They sinned so much. They got into all kind of a mess. That three score and ten is for the backsliding, backslidden obedient wayward person in Genesis God said 120 years that is what God has given to man and until you reach there you haven't reached where you should reach forget three score and ten don't let anybody let you die because you pass empty no don't let it I never believe in no three score and ten you check it out check check that voice check check that sound I think it's Psalm 90. Read the whole Psalm and you're going to see. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't jive with salvation and deliverance. It doesn't jive with the power of God. It jives with sinners. The people who disobey. This is obedient and are going to die. But the saints shall live. Yes. Oh yes, you shall live. Faith. Long life. Faith. Faith. With long life. That's right. With long life, he says. Long life. Satisfy you to show his salvation to you. But you want to say three score and ten? You can take it. I'm gonna leave it. I'll be 75 years old in a couple on the 19th of February. I forget, I forgot that I'm 75. I still think I'm, I'm 52. Give God praise. 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 Those of you who are sick, believe, man, believe, y'all, believe. The word of God is to be a fruit. The power of fruit is healing and deliverance and righteousness and all of that good stuff. We want to thank Pastor Mickey. Let us give him a round of applause for the reminding us today. Thank you, Pastor Mickey, for that serious message. We have different ministers, ministers in different ways, different kind of ministries, but they all come from the word. And we thank God for whom we have. We thank God for our church, for our ministers. Now, we're getting ready to close. Does anybody else have anything they want to say or do, Pastor? Okay, thank, thank you very much for staying on with us and for being here. Thank you very much. Um, oh, hallelujah. You all did very well. We give you, yes, 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 yes. So let us dismiss. Praise the Lord. Father, we come now to say thanks for your word that reminds us, Lord God, reminded us that we need to bear fruit. We need to make our hearts right. Oh God, oh God, I pray that you will encourage all of us to go into your word again and see, see the things that we need to know and hear and do. We pray for those, Lord, those that are still on the side, oh God, who might be hardened. We ask you to have mercy and help them to become soft, to receive your word. And we pray that you will bless us as we go this week. Those that are still sick, we pray that you will heal them even as they go. Let them feel your precious hand, your powerful hand. And those who are not saved, let them, Lord God, call upon you for salvation. 
bless us now. We thank you for being here. We thank you for being with us. I bless your people now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, with the blessings of Abraham. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.